I didn't expect it will take me such a long time to find my perfect keyboard. To be honest, I didn't plan to buy a mechanical keyboard at the beginning. I wanted something minimalistic, elegant and very silent. Mostly because during my student years my roommate had a very noisy and annoying keyboard that he used to play games all night and I could hear it even with the double closed doors. Also, in case I wanted to bring my keyboard to the office, my colleagues would hate me if the keyboard was too loud as we sit very close to each other. I was as well considering ergonomic keyboard but I am still not ready for such a big change. I work as a programmer and in my free time I also use my keyboard a lot. I wanted to have RGB lights so I could give my home office different moods. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any not mechanical keyboard with RGBs, so I decided to choose something from mechanical. I wasn't quite sure exactly what I want, but I had an idea that it has to be as silent as possible, full size, it should be a hot swappable keyboard, I wanted to build it myself, it should match the color palette at my home office, and it should be not wireless. It was hard for me to decide myself what keyboard to choose, so I asked my community on Twitch to help me, and they actually were very helpful. Apparently there is a lot of types of switches and some of them sound very similar, but from what I found out, they can be rated in a following order. From my quick research, I decided that I really want the Cherry MX Silent, but at the moment making the purchase, I couldn't find any of those available in Europe, and I decided to go with brown switches and in my opinion, they don't sound that different from reds. So next I need to choose a barebone keyboard. There are five different types of keyboards available. The first one is full size, 100% and it has 104 key. Full size compact is 96%, has the same amount of keys but reduced space around them. So in my opinion, it makes layout a bit weird and I believe I would be hitting some random keys while typing. The TKL or 10 keys less keyboard is basically a usual keyboard but without a numpad. It typically has 87 keys and it's much easier to carry around if I decide to bring it to the office. 75% keyboard looks alright. These keyboards are not very common and a more compact version of TKL. 65% keyboards are also not very common. Compared to 75% keyboards, they do not have the row function and home cluster. 60% keyboard I found the most popular and very easy to find. Also very easy to customize, but I program and I use function row a lot. So as a programmer, I wouldn't go lower than 75% keyboard. But considering that 75% is not that common and I want to have a custom keyboard, also it doesn't make sense for me to choose the full size 100% keyboard because I, in 99% of cases I don't use numpad. Other few important things to consider while choosing a keyboard base. The first one is a keyboard layout. I live in Denmark and Danish layout usually has Enter looking like this. This is ISO layout. And in NC layout, Enter looks like this. The first one is more common in Europe and the second one is more common in the US. After my three days research, I found that there are more design choices and better variety of keycaps for NC type keyboard. So I went with that. The second thing to consider is what material you want your keyboard to be made of. The most common from what I know is aluminum, plastic and some transparent plastic, which looks not very good in my opinion, and I personally prefer aluminum. Next thing is, do you want your keyboard to be more close or open? And with that, I mean that some keyboards, they have keys a bit lower than its base, so it's more closed. With this keyboard, your RGB will be less bright and potentially the keyboard will be less clicky, while in more open keyboards, it is the opposite. Another thing is, do you want to have a volume knob? On your keyboard. For me it wasn't important so I choose to not have it. Things like low travel and full travel keyboards were not important for me, but if you want to know what it is about then I will add a link in the description below. Another weird thing I noticed on some keyboards, the cable for the, of the keyboard is coming from the side instead of from the behind of the keyboard, so be aware of that when choosing your keyboard. So now the fun part, choosing keycaps. And it was definitely the hardest part because I couldn't choose. I basically started for a couple of days choosing the color palette because I wanted it to be warm and elegant at the same time. I also saw some crazy designs and I was wondering 
who would ever on earth buy something like that? Yeah, so I couldn't decide what color of keycaps I want, so I decided to go with the white and use RGB light to create the mood. I went through the list of requirements and unfortunately there was no way I could find all these parts in one online shop and it was also impossible to find it in Europe. The bell bone I would have to order from the US or the UK, as well as switches, keycaps I found in Danish shop and Amazon. I was too impatient to wait for all these parts to arrive so I could use my new keyboard. So I bought a pre-built hot swappable TKL keyboard from Glorious. It's not sponsored by the way. I got it in two days and the keys sound great even without loop. So far using it for three weeks and I'm happy with my choice. By the way, if you're buying a new keyboard, remember to buy a wrist rest. It will make your typing experience much better. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.